Tammy Louise um, with TLC Designs today on my Facebook Live Creative Sharing group, as well as the TLC Designs store page on Facebook. Um, I'm ponytailing it today. Um, been a little bit under the weather, and actually I have something going on in my eye, so I didn't put any makeup on or anything. This is the face that everyone looks at all day long. Um, but I love me, so it's okay. I, I'm sure, you know, we all have our ponytail days. Uh, there are a few things going on in the store this week. It has been a fantastic week. <clears throat> the Celebration Invitations has been going out. Aaron Reed has done uh, booth tour. If you haven't seen any of that information going on, um, check out down below in the stream on her Facebook page and her YouTube channel as well as my YouTube channel and both Facebook uh, page and the group, the creative sharing group that people usually join um, TLC designs at. All of that information with the booth tour, we had a hop, an Instagram hop. It went fantastic. The ladies have done such a really, really good job with inspiration on a brand new release that we just had. There are four new stamp sets and um, they are four by eight. I wanted to explain a little bit about them because they're not the four by six, uh, they're four by eight. So they have a big, large amount of stamps in them. You're gonna get two and a half to three inch images to put a ton of color in. Uh, I like those better. They cover the card landscape a little bit better than the tiny little images. Uh, and they have been fantastically popular this week. We also had last night with Erin Reed, she did a card show with the CU in the Center. If you weren't able to catch that, it did stream as well. You can check out below. And tonight's live, of course, we're going to go over the See You in the Center die again. There is another tip or trick that um, one of the design team members, Shanna, helped me to find. And it really did help a great deal. So I'm going to share that with you tonight. But I'm also going to use the little topper die cut that comes in the uh, cherry on top die set and then the Aztec sunshine and the little birds are going to be in there as well. So we use quite a bit of the product um, in this particular project, but start your collection out slowly. You're going to get a ton of cute little bits and pieces that you can mix and match with other projects anytime you want. So let's get started on this. And then don't forget also on the 20th, um, I think that's Saturday, the Live show with Aaron Reed. It's called Aaron Reed or Aaron Makes With. And it's going to be me, TLC Designs. It's going to be your first guest. We're going to do a little chit chat, a little get to know, and then we're going to craft together. So if you haven't got it yet, I wanted to show you that this is the Blessings stamp. It is the freebie in the store right now, has a few little sentiments with it. It will not be free for long. So if you haven't jumped in there, jump in there now and grab the freebie. And color with us or come and create with us on the 20th at Aaron Reed uh, Makes YouTube, TLC Designs YouTube, the TLC Designs Creative Sharing Group and the TLC page, TLC Designs page. So come and craft with us and have a little bit of fun. Grab a glass of wine. Maybe I might have one with you all and see how silly we can get with our ink. But we'll see. We'll have a great time. Let's get to today's project. James is going to switch the camera. Okay. Let me turn this volume down just a little bit more. Okay, so that is the freebie that I just showed you. Her name is Blessings, and she is in the store currently. This is today's project. Isn't it sweet? These are the alicorns. It's called Alicorn Happiness. This one would work perfect with the double dial die, too, if you made the angle the right way. It looks like it's kind of jumping up and flying. I dressed them up in a little bow. I'll show you how I did all of that. That's all paper pieced. Stamped on white cardstock, stamped on some of the um, perfectly precious design paper that's a digi paper in the store. And then the Aztec Sunshine. What size do I do? Actual die. Dawn's asking. 
Uh, hey there, friend. Let's see what. What size do I do? Donna, I'm sorry. I got to color it. It's. I don't understand the question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Mandy. Hi, I'm sorry. Hi, everybody. Amy Dotson Dixon. There's Vicki Gallagher. Thanks, Vicki. I think it's sweet too. It's Sue a nice cut. Huh? Sue on YouTube. Sue. Sue. Hi, Sue. I don't see you too, but I'm glad you've joined in on us. Oh, here it is. Sue yep. Hints. I gotcha. I'm looking now. Amy Dotson, Facebook user. So sometimes it tells us who you are. Um, if you give them permission to tell us who they are, right? Yeah. If they click on that, then we can see who you are. And there's Don Walsh. Great. I'm so happy everybody could join in today. This is the project that we're going to make. And like I said, um, Perfectly Precious Design Paper Pack in the store did all of these cute little, I was going a little crazy with fussy cutting, but you know how much I enjoy that. And then when you open the card up, it says Rare Find. Isn't that sweet? And another little bow that comes in the stamp set as well. Uh, and we're going to work with some Distress Oxides and um, regular Distress Ink today as well. Let's go over the products real quick. This is called Action Stamps. I'm going to use this little guy on the dial itself. And I don't think you're a... I think I was going to use Hopping Friends and did not because this set came with some really cute sentiments 22 piece stamp set oh yep i used your a and rare find from the alicorns aren't they sweet i can't wait okay dies in the project are aztec sunshine see you in the center interactive die with full instructions on the back and the land and seas die we're going to use the grass cut twice this is the paper pack, Perfectly Precious. It's um, six by seven and a half for any of the slim line projects that you might need. There are 18 different designs. We're gonna use some of the lime green salad, a little bit of the dark pink, which is up here. Some of these flowers, which is this design here, and some of this coral. It's like a super light coral. And the papers actually have a little bit of a um, gradient going from the center outward. Okay, so we're going to put this products away. That's what I'm using tonight in the project. Kathy, please sit on. Sir, says hi. Hi, Kathy, please. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, there's everybody and Vicki. Fantastic. So I want to look at this real quick with everybody so that they can kind of see. I understand that sometimes interactive cards are a little bit intimidating this is not a complicated card it looks like it has a whole lot of bits and pieces in it that would throw you off but it's really not complicated i am going to go step by step today but i want to show you what the bones of this project should look like when you're ready to put your cute little images on top okay these obviously are brads that are going to slide through the slot when you turn this mechanism over and this is another one of the tricks that i wanted to show you that shanna and i actually came up with and uh, worked out because we were having some issues the angle that this arm pushes on this paper that i have double cut but this face is double cut plus it has a design paper but the pressure that the arm tends to push with the brad on the slot can eventually start to wear out. So what I've done was taken a little bit of tape that's got thickness to it and created a railing. Double-sided foam tape. Double-sided foam tape. Let me see if I can get this close enough so that you all can see how when you move, it follows like a railroad track. It's like a track to keep this edge from pushing on the slot so hard. It catches this edge of this arm. So it's gonna really make it, look at how easy this is moving. And it goes all the way from the center to all the way to the other end, okay? So in reality, when you're done and you've done this correctly. My huh? My design. Yes, 
I already James did. engineered with me on this. I did all the SVG work. <laughs> he cut a slot a bunch of times. No, I'm, I'm kidding. He, he's really good at the angles. So figuring out these angles was a little bit of a mathematical issue, but he came Kathy, up with you're all late. that information. Kathy, you're not late. <laughs> <laughs> she even said she is. So this is how easy it should work. Um, if you keep these brads super loose and you put a little railing, and I don't think this is ever going to wear out. I think you just go on and on and on forever playing with it. So let's get started let's with the project out. today. Test what? Forever and ever? Yeah. <laughs> He's in rear form tonight, ladies. Just FYI. Okay. <laughs> so... I'm going to take my glasses off because I do actually function a little closer up better without my glasses on. So in the double dial, you're in the C in the center dial, this is the really kind of smooth, groovy shape. Okay. It's soft and very feminine looking. This is what I it's got curves. cut. It's got curves. He's in shape. Rare form tonight. But if you take this die, oops, let me put it the right way. If you take this die cut and you keep a little portion of it outside of the die and you run it through and you've already scored the piece of paper and it's doubled, then you're going to get the actual card base that really kind of frames this perfectly. So this is the largest frame that I used. And then I have pre-cut some pieces so we don't have to do all of the cutting together tonight. But we are going to go step by step. Inside that um, die set is the... This isn't the right, this is the size that I cut this cute little frame out of. Let me get the die set out of my bag of stuff. Okay, so here's the large. Oops. I'm just making a mess. Making a mess. Here's the die that I used to cut the piece that we are going to put oxides on so that it sits on top of the other piece. So I downloaded is, a blessing and it looks huge when I open it up. I want to fit it on an A2 card. What do I make it? Oh, yeah. Um, I can definitely go over that with you when the live is over. If you're opening it up in a particular program, it depends on what program you're going to use. If, if Shanna is online, have you seen Shanna? Not yet. Shanna um, is really good at working software, and uh, Stephanie could probably help you, uh, and Melanie. If any of them are online today, they could probably go step by step. But if not, I will definitely go through all the messages like I usually do um, and talk through it with you step by step and make sure that you can open that up and print it whatever size you want. How wide is the foam tape used? Is it about a half inch? How or, wide? Yeah. Um, foam tape. Yep, half an inch wide. And this one is 3M. Okay, so I have cut one of the larger inside frames as well. We're going to color on this one with the Distress Ink. And then, like I said, this die, I am missing one of the dies that go in this set. I must have placed it someplace else. But this die has another die that cuts on the inside here, and that's how I got this frame. Let me show you with, what did I do with? Oh, Shanna. Who was it that asked? Was it Don? Yeah. Don Walsh could use some assistance. Opening up. Maybe I left that in here. Nope. Opening up the Blessings Freebie Digital Stamp Set. If there's any way you could help her out. So there is, this is not the one I used. This is the one that I used. This one cuts on the outside and the inside, and you get this cute little frame. And I colored it with different colors of oxide to kind of bring out some of the color in the 
uh, alicorns. And so we use that as well. I do not have another one cut, but as we get to that portion of the card, you're going to kind of see I can cut one for you and show you what I did. So we have used two of the frames from that set. And then the land and seas <clears throat> has a grass die. And I cut one from, let's see if this one matches it exactly. So if I use the center of the paper, you can kind of see I put the die in the center of a larger piece of green paper. That one that I printed out. Okay, so I printed some of the green. I put the die in the center, and what happens is you get two halves. So what I'm going to do, because I want to cover the brad that you're going to use to create the mechanism in the seed in the center die, I'm going to cover it with this grass. I kind of needed it to make it taller, and I wanted it to be a little bit of variant. So you're going to get the gradient is in the center here real high, and the gradient is in this area here on the low. Okay, so that, that's all I did was print some of that paper out and then use the die cut, and I got both of the die cuts that I needed for this process with one die. So then that is done. I'm going over real quick what I used. This is a part of the cherry on top, and Steph Ackerman, one of the design team members, gave me inspiration the other day. She posted it, I think, today in the creative sharing group. So Sue's asking, so the grass type only cuts the top of the grass out? It cuts only on the top, but you're going to end up with, if you cut in the center of a piece of paper, you're going to end up with two tops. And then what I did was put it on the die which is here, okay, and matched up and cut this so that it exactly matches this one. <clears throat> and then when I tuck the larger of the two in and behind, it's going to mean, mean that the grass is high enough to cover the bread that I need to enter to make the mechanism. Can you all see that? And then all I have to do is kind of snip the little extras. So that's how that's created. All right, so we have covered that. Anyway, I was on Cherry on Top. Steph Ackerman posted her card, and it's a cute little alicorn. And in behind him, she used, I think it was the Watercolor Naturals. I can't guarantee that because I didn't actually look at the description, which I probably should. Maybe the Watercolor Naturals design paper pack that's in the store right now was used on the back. I don't know. But she had three of these cute little tops of the cherry on top right on top of each other and they look just like clouds and I would have never thought to use them as clouds but that's what I did on this one as well so I just kind of figured out where let's see how did I get this one on oh so it's this way nope there so I put this one on there, and that's that portion, and then I hand snipped around this edge, and then I used this side over here. So I don't even need to make cloud uh, dies because this could be used very easily for clouds in the background. I do have some clouds already in the Aztec Sunshine set as well, but they're like little and they're finished balls. If you need something bigger, you can definitely use something like this. Or the other day when I was live with Aaron Reed, uh, Melanie Smith, who is another design team member, mentioned that if you cut out some of those clouds that are finished in the Aztec Sunshine die set, put them next to each other and taped them, you could use those as masks, stencils almost, to put ink on the edge of cloudy kind of bumpy edges. So there's like several different things that you could do. Maybe I'll do that and show you guys my interpretation of how that would look or how it would work so we'll work on that it's at another point in time when i get to play with these i'm going to be playing with these for a lot of weeks <laughs> because i've seen so many of the design team member inspirations and i fell in love with them but i didn't really get to create too much because i'm doing the background work sort of so wow that does look like clouds multi-use love it very clever thank you hi denise Everybody is still, yep. Oh, Vicki, there she is. Okay, good. So 
we have used all of these and then I changed up in the one that I've already pre-made and took pictures of. There's white on the top, but it doesn't really make any difference. This is some, um, I got this, what is this called? The glitter paper, but uh, sateen, and it's from Simon Says Stamps. I could probably find that paper pack if anybody is interested in that. I'll come back and let you know what that is. I cut some of the, and that's with the sunshine dye from Aztec Sunshine. I cut some of the little birds that came with the Aztec Sunshine dye set. Like, yeah, teeny tiny birds. I cut those out of black. I cut one of the, I forgot the word that she used for this. <laughs> What's the word, James? <laughs> Dials. <laughs> my, my head went completely blank. I'm sorry, that happens all the time now. I'm old, I guess. But this is, I cut the dial twice and I glued them together so that the paper's nice and strong. You definitely want to work with strong stuff. Lever. What? A lever. A lever. A lever. Lever. A lever. lever. <laughs> At any rate, I did have to look and cheat to see what it was called. <laughs> Just a little bit lame on my part, but there you have it. I'm old. So then I want to mention that in this die set, there is a tool. And this is really important because it's going to make sure that your brides aren't too tight. And that's very important for it to work. So cut three of these, put them together, and you get this cute little tool. Just use it over and over and over. Um, I keep it with my die set and use it continuously. That's a cool tool. It is a cool tool. Thank goodness I designed it for you. Oh, he did not. I said so. You did not. You just don't remember because you're old. <laughs> he says, I don't remember because I'm old. Ladies, do not let him beat up on me tonight, I swear. Okay. So let me get all these little die cuts out of here. There we go. We're going to use two or three birds on this one, too, because there's, like, loads and loads of birds. Now, in the die set, something else that you're going to need to choose, one of these is longer than the other. These creates the slots on your cards. If you have a card that is going horizontally, you may or may not, it's up to you, want to use the larger of the two slots. If you had more of a horizontal card and you didn't have quite as much room but you wanted to use this frame, I did make one that was smaller and that's the only difference between them. They do the same exact thing. No, you didn't, James. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, no, you didn't. Good girl, Amy. Okay. Man, this is one of the little additions that I wanted to do so that if you create a project with the seam in the center, you do not have to see the center thread. And in order to do that, you don't want that slot mechanism to cut. So you can see there's no cut lines around the hole, but it will emboss showing you where the hole belongs. So if you want to put the hole on it, like today's project does have the hole behind this little piece of grass. You can use this and cut the hole on it. If you don't, you can cut your face plate again on design paper. See, I'll show you if I can get up in there and show you that that brad is actually there and I've covered it and there's no recognition of it whatsoever on the outside. So you don't have to show the brad if you don't want to, or you can cover the brad up with something really cute just like I did today, but here's the tool that cuts the hole. And I put it on this tape because it's kind of a tiny die, a little bit hard to hold on to, but it's just a little circle die and it has the hole. You put it where the embossing is and you run it through the machine and you're done. Let me get the white paper out of that. Now that I'm noticing how much paper I had left in there. That's the wind. Isn't that crazy? I don't know if you guys can hear that in the background, but it's just banging on the door, on the windows. Okay, so I'm going to put these away. Whoops. Off to the side. Here's a bunch of brads. I've already used more than one, so it's going to be really, really fun to try and get them to open the correct way and close the correct way now that I'm reusing them. All right. So while cutting these dies, it has full instructions on the back. Tells you how many you need of everything. I cut two dials. I cut four of the arms and put two together each. So you're going to need two arms of double. One, two. And they're double papered. Then you're going to need, in total, eight cut of the washers. 
making four. So you're going to double the washers as well. You want everything, this is paper. So it's definitely going to need to be strengthened a little bit. So the next thing that we're going to do is. Sue says it's tiny. You should probably lose it. You should show us a tool. You had a sticky tool thing. You know, what sticky tool that thing? Pin that you pick up small stuff with. Is this it? No, it's not it. <laughs> You know what I'm talking sticky about. Sticky tool thing. The sticky tool thing. That's why I, I put it in a little piece of, t of um, tape. I don't lose it. It's pretty good. Good size. It's not that small. He's talking about one of those things, a gem picker is what he's yeah. talking about. No, I'm not using a gem picker. All right, so I'm going to get That's out my you got skills. don't make your table ugly paper because we are about to get inky. We put these arms and washers back up in here. We are going to get out itchy nose. This is the piece of paper that we're going to work on. Excuse me. Goodness, that sneeze came out of nowhere. Okay. Can't do it again. Huh? But you can't do it again. I bet I can't do it again. And if I do, I'll be sure to let you know. Ace. We're going to work with tumbled glass color distressing. And these are brand new for me. I've never had them before, but I saw somebody working with them. Who was that? Kristen, I think, Christine um, Warner. I can't remember her last name, but I think she was working with these, and I wanted to try them. And I did like them today, ladies, so I'm going to have to switch to these from the sponges that were flat because I did notice that you get – um, more even spread because it's domed. I did like it. So if you haven't bought them yet um, and tried them, I'm trying them for <clears> you, and I will give you my honest impression is that it works really well. I think it could blend better with those too. Yeah, it did actually. Take a little bit of the ink off. So um, we're going to go from about the center. Tumble glass. Yeah, like I think I'm coming down with some sort of cold or something because my sinuses have just been crazy today, and I got this Allergies. red eye Spring's thing. Coming. Oh, maybe that's exactly what it is. I didn't even remember it was spring. That's horrible. Oh goodness, that could be why my eye is all clogged up too. So we're going to just spread this out a little bit. <clears throat> Done with that one. We're going to move on to um, weathered wood. You get a little bit of a stormy feel in there. Is there anything going on? See, I, I can't craft with my glasses on because I'm too close, but I can't see what they're saying unless I have them on. Will these dies cut through two papers at once? <clears throat> Mandy, they will, depending on the thickness of the paper. So if you, this is 60, 65 pound paper and it did cut through. Um, cover the bread, cover the bread. <laughs> Don likes to cover the bread. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, Vicky. <laughs> My own husband didn't even say God bless you. Um, bless you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We had sleet and rain and snow here in Illinois today. It was Oh, see, last night we had a lot of rain. It rained really hard and heavy. <clears throat> but we're not cold. We just can't see, right? Yes. Thank you for answering. You're welcome, Mandy. I'm sorry my husband is missed sitting it. over there and it. didn't catch this. Somebody was asking a question. So this weather wood goes a little bit more into like a darker blue and gray tones. Yeah, they're Velcro. Look, I'll show you. Isn't that fun? Makes it really easy to stick on. We're not old. We just can't see. Yes, that's true. I'm old. 
He's old. <laughs> A year old. Yeah, Don. Um, I know that several stores, like Simon Says Stamps and a few other stores that carry <clears throat> Copic ink have like twice a year, they have pretty decent sales on the ink pens, but I couldn't tell you when that is. You might want to get a hold of that store or someone that you know works for that store. So I'm just basically going upward, trying to create a little bit more of a darker sky towards the top of the card, because that's where we're going to put those clouds and you really want to kind of have them stand out in contrast. Don okay. says she's old, but she doesn't mind. I don't mind being old either. It I'm means, old and I lost my mind. We, it means we know a few things. Knowledge and, and wisdom and all of those things come with age. So I think I'm way better off than I ever was in my 20s. <laughs> okay. And then, is that tumble glass? It is. We already did that one. We need, that's the weather wood. Come on, Tam. There it is. Stormy sky is the last color. So we're going to add a little bit more blue back to it. The weather wood kind of gives you a good base for this one because then it turns it more into a purpley blue. Now I see it all means wisdom. Yeah, James, can you make the camera any closer to the project? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, it's zapped him, ladies. Zap. Static electricity. I need to get a humidifier is that better? in this house. Yeah, I think it does. You see? I'm going to continue to just blend one more time and get maybe a little bit more of that gray. And I'm not quite done with the stormy. So I really kind of want it to blend nice. I like it darker on the edges too. I don't know why. I always do that. So of course I have it now. It's a, kind of like distressing it in a way, huh? Yeah, but it, but why do I like it darker on the edges? I mean, it doesn't have to be on the edge to be distressed, right? Go a little bit more tumble glass and go kind of over <clears throat> all of it so that I don't see these distracting lines that I'm seeing. I kind of smooth out the difference between all three of those colors. Let's see if I like that better. Oh. Yes. I kind of like that these are cumulus clouds. Got a little bit of variance in it. Very nice. All right. And I haven't played with these in a while either. So that was fun. Warm me out. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to think I'm crazy for being married to somebody like you. <laughs> What's that you have to say? Yes, but I do color them. Her hair. That's what, I, that's what my husband says, Evie mm -hmm. says. I'm living in a Peter Pan song. I'll I never grow up. up. <laughs> it's true. Ladies, how many of your gentlemen are not grown up yet? <laughs> Hands I'm, up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. I'm a Toys R Us kid. Okay. He's funny, that's for sure. So I think I this is the point in time where I grabbed a little bit of this water. Because it's just a little more of the water. Sprinkle, sprinkle, get a little bit of contrast. It's gray water because it was cleaning ink off of sand. Nobody cares. This is why we get inky, so we can make a mess, right? More mess, the more better. No fun to grow up. No, it's not fun. Yeah. Right yep. Let me try this. This is going to be a little loud. I'm going to try this real quick, ladies. Okay. 
Okay. See what we've done. Kind of added a little bit of texture to the background. All right. The next thing we're going to do is grab. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to grab that green strip and I'm going to pop this back here just temporarily for a moment, just momentarily, so I can kind of get a view of how high I can or cannot put that brad and still have the grass cover it. So, right about, see how it was still white there? And I want the grass to go all the way to the edges this time, which I learned from last time. So we're going all the way from edge to edge, and all of the white is covered. So I am going to grab, what did I do with my, here it is, my tape runner. And I'm going to stick one here. One little bit here. Turn it over and just do a little bit of this edge as well. When you get the two grass borders, is the paper folded in half? No. I'm going to show you guys right now just so that it answers the question of what happens and how you cut this. So I'm going to take this. Um, where's my scissors? This is what it all looked like when I printed, by the way. The papers and then I stamped a uh, little on each color of paper. I stamped the two uh, images on each color because I literally fussy cut. I don't know if you can tell, but out of the flowered paper that's in the precious, perfectly precious pack, I did the tail, the hair, both hairs, the tail. Out of the peach that is solid, I did the wings on both of them and the bow on this one. Out of the dark pink, I ended up doing the hoofs and the little nose and the unicorn uh, horn. So this is all paper pieced. I didn't think that I needed to go through all of that today because it's more about how to put the project together and make them as cute as they literally are. Oh, aren't they sweet? This one's getting caught on something. Oh, there. It's getting caught on the extra little bumper that I put in the back. And then they nose butt. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? But yeah, it works super well with those, those railroad kind of ties holding them in there. Okay. So that's what that looked like. Let's cut this really quick. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to put this here, grab a little piece of washi tape, and I'm going to run it through the Gemini Junior real quick, and I'm going to show you what this turns out like. So I cut once, take this off, and I have two. That's all I did. One is going up and one is going down because they're exactly opposite. And if you use this awesome <laughs> paper, from the perfectly precious paper pack that has that gradient, your grass is going to vary in color as well. Can you see? That's so cool. <laughs> I'm thinking some Wink of Stella would be pretty on those alicorns. I didn't do Wink of Stella, but I did do stickles, Stardust stickles. Show you again how shiny they are. Let's see if the light can catch. The shine. Oh, he's covered. See his nose? Ah, and his little horn. Aren't they sweet? And those little, their little hoofs. They all have that glitter. So that's how this works. Did you is good? Hell no, I wouldn't cut it like that. 
<laughs> I'm thinking someone, what, what, what? Oh, I can't fussy cut. Got it. Oh, that works too. Okay, so there you go. That's what that is all about. And all I did then, take this and just use this frame. It's all wrapped up. Just use this frame right here and cut it so that it comes out with the perfect edge, just like this one has here. Okay? So, that's a super popular set too, and they're almost gone. <laughs> A lot is almost gone. I couldn't believe how well this week is gone, which is fantastic to hear, but I digress. We are working on this currently, and what I want to do... I will let never. Huh? Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Showed up. Keenan. It is better late than never, and sometimes I have some people that just step in on the lunch hours and stuff when they're working. So that's kind of fun. Catch a little craftiness. It's how we learn to live creatively. The TLC portion of my name, my company name is TLC because my name is Tammy Louise Cunliffe, which is TLC. But also, a long time ago, I wanted to make sure that I always um, share and learn to live creatively, which is TLC as well. So see a little bit of education. <laughs> Oh, this one, there, it came out. Okay, so I only temporarily put this back one on because I don't actually want to cut the center hole through that. I'm using that taller grass in order to not see the hole. So let's do, where's the, here it is. Here's the slot. This is the necessary die piece in order to create the actual mechanism itself. So we're going to put the slot right about there and I'm going to hold this down on the bottom one and try and slide this one out I only taped it temporarily so we're going to put this is it centered yeah it's centered pretty good I think okay so I'm going to run this through the Gemini real quick and we're going to have those slot holes that we need in order to create the mechanism and then the majority of the work is done at that point all you do is put the arms on the wheel and you're all set <clears throat> my husband needs to get me what was you? What were you? Were you asked to get me for my birthday? Some plates for your Gemini. Plates for my Gemini Junior. Guess why? Because I was told if you continue to alternate them, you would not get that warpy warp thing, and that's not true. I alternated and alternated and alternated, and I still got that warpy. You over alternated it. You're not over alternating. He's not being nice again. Okay, so we're done with the slot maker. I'm gonna grab this cute little circle because I do want the hole right there in the middle where it actually embossed upwards because the other one has a hole in it. Run this through the Gemini Junior. I love the machine. It just really blows the plate. And it sounds like, what do you call this? A sick cow. A sick cow. <laughs> it's an obnoxious noise, really. Okay. We're going to take this off. So when's now when your birthday is? My birthday is the end of March, 29th. I'm going to be really old. <laughs> really old. Six, but three months older than James because he turns the same age in June. <laughs> so, all right. So then all I need to do at that point in order to cover up that cute little Brad. Okay, there we go. Let me get my fingers back there. Take this up a little. 
I didn't really tape it down very hard, so it should come up pretty easy. Put this up here, right where I trimmed. You have to try, <clears throat> have you ever tried to put your plates in the dishwasher? It will help plant them. <gasps> Who said that? Kathy, please. That's pretty clever. How did you hear of that, Kathy? I've never heard of that. Although I seriously believe it would work because sometimes that dishwasher gets so everything so hot that it kind of just melts things back to the original shape. I believe it. Maybe I'll have to try it, but then Jimmy won't have anything to buy me for my birthday. Steph Ackerman says she's heard of it, but never tried it. Oh, okay. Hi, Steph. Just taking the edges of this down a little bit. Stephanie, did you see I used your cloud <laughs> idea? <laughs> I I changed it. I she did. heard of it on Facebook and it does work, she says. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So I'll put this back down right there. I still have the whole space. See? We're gonna stick a brad in there right now. Of course, it would be a brad that I need to squeeze together. Oh, sorry, ladies. Do you that's, do any other crafts? That's the timer on whatever you have cooking, honey. Yeah. I do. I have cross-stitched the majority of my life. I'm just going to temporarily put this down so it doesn't come out. Cross-stitch. I used to do that really awesome artwork with the little tubes of coloring and it had a ball at the end and you color inside of the um you could do linen number no linens like with grandma grace uh we would color tablecloths and they'd be beautiful floral and you color them with these little looks like paint tubes with balls at the end i don't remember what it was called but i did cross stitch and i definitely did um i did several weddings actually for the floral bouquets and things like that I've been pretty crafty most of my life, actually. I can do paint by number. He can do paint by number. <laughs> he is actually a very, very good artist, very talented artist. When we were in high school, this is just a just don't call anybody kind of thing. I'm going to go through the back and cut out the grass area where the slot is. Because all I really wanted the grass to do at this point was to cover Liquid and the bread. But when we were in high school, as I was saying earlier, two, two seconds ago, <clears throat> he was in a drawing class of some sort. What's the name some of that drawing art. class? It was some art class. Some art class. And he was asked to do some kind of mural on the high school wall. So he was very talented. Well, I did a mural for the name. Uh, didn't you do one? In the high school oh, with no. tigers? That, oh, no, maybe that was at the library. Maybe I'm confused. Anyway, he's quite the artist. He can't see straight anymore because of all of his age issues. <laughs> what do they call it? Starts with the S. Stimulus. What do you have in your eye? Stigmatism. Oh, stigmatism. And so, like, parallel lines aren't parallel anymore. When he's looking at them, they're kind of shaky looking. I suppose I could have put the grass on there first and then run the thing through, but it doesn't really matter to me at all which way I do it. I like the fussy cut anyway. You just grab the slots, and then I'm going to stick a little bit of the tape on there. a mug press. Huh? A cricket. A mug press. Oh, okay. I used to do string art, too. How many of you ladies remember string art or hook rugs? I used to do those all the time. I even had a bedazzler. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know. I'm telling, I'm telling really awful when you were 12. memory stories here. You guys have gotten me on to tangents about crafty stuff, which is kind of fun. I'm just taping this down a little bit extra. So... That's basically the entire scene, the entire background scene. Okay? So all we need to do now is the easy and fun part. We're not definitely not going to do all of that work again today. That fussy cutting is not something 
any of you want to watch me do live for sure or schnizzle schnozzle possum pepper incorporated what's the name of that movie that show that you Laverne just said Shirley. Laverne and Shirley see he's pretty bright <laughs> so we have the wheel I feel like I invented the wheel <laughs> I'm going to put this here so once you have decided where this wheel is going to sit in your project the arms go on the under hole and the upper hole from where the wheel is going to attach to the mechanism. That's all you need to do. Then you're done. So we're going to turn this. And we want to see the wings. I'm going to grab an iron. Which one did I say it was? That one. No. Yeah. That one. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to put it through one of the arms. These breaths are going to be the death of me. What are you cooking for dinner? <laughs> hey, some noodles and oh, that's right. Meatballs. So you're going to go through the arm first and then through the actual dial. So I got the word right. And then that tool. This is where the tool comes in. I have to find the tool. <clears throat> James, did you steal the tool? Yes. Oh, I liked it. Hmm? I have too much stuff here on my desk. Okay. There it is. I found it. Move this stuff away from me. Thank you. You're making a mess. So with the tool, you're going to put it right between the bread arms, the wings on the bread, flip them over. And what you have is the perfect amount of space. Let me get close enough to the camera. The perfect amount of space between these two so that everything moves super smooth. Can you see that? It leaves that gap. And that's what you need. Okay. So we're working from the upside down angle. We're going to grab another breath. We're going to put it through the arm. doesn't matter which end. They're both exactly the same. And then we're also going to use the tool. Close it. Now, if you look at the directions on the back, it shows you exactly how to do all of this, okay? And it shows that I leave this one going down and this one up, oops, up. So you want it to look just like that, okay? Once you've done that, the whole mechanism is practically completed. Just open here. Also, I want to stamp on there. Let's get our cute little stamp. What did I do with it? Here it is. Or you know, block. Some ink. I'm going to use Versifying Clear because it gives you a really crisp little image. I like this little action stamp set because if you have the other interactive card as well in your stash, it comes with the entire circle as well as one arrow pointing both directions just for this style. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So we're going to flip this back over. Yeah, I engineered this die too. What? And was asking if I engineered this die. The double dial die was completely my idea, and James helped me with the angles. He's a mathematician. Yes. We're a, we're a what do you call it? Duo. <laughs> Superhero and, uh, no. <laughs> what do you call that, James? Dynamic duel. Dynamic duel. There you go. So and just make sure. Tool that's... I created too. Oh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> he is fun today, guys. Okay, so now we're gonna grab the washers. We have four of them cut, and they are doubled as well, just like everything else. It's paper, so you don't want it to be weak. 
So we're going to lay one here and one here. Grab a brad. Now these are, keep in mind the brads that you use. i got to remember which way this camera. Brads that you use, don't use ones that have big domes or big balls at the end. Try and get something that's really kind of flat. These I got from Amazon. So we're going to go from the front through one of the washers, through the slot, turn it over, apply another washer. Paper works better on paper and it slides easier on paper than it does with the metal interrupting it. And grab your machine, your tool machine. And then it is just going a million miles an hour tonight. And you're going to do the same thing with the other side. Oh, my grass got bent. Oh, no, it's not. It's an extra piece of something that got caught. And it's caught in there, and that'll drive me nuts. There you go. <clears throat> Put it through the washer. Wash it through the slot. Turn it over. Grab the last washer, put it in there, use your tool. Okay, now the only thing left is to connect the other end of this arm to this washer and the other end of this arm to this washer. Like that, okay? We're going to start from the front and do that same exact process that we just did with the purple ones. I'm going to do them with pink as a matter of color because they're going to be covered up anyway. It's going through the washer. It's going through the slot. Then you put it through the washer that's already waiting on the other side. And you grab the arm and you put it through that. Maybe. Ugh. It'll go in the hole. Try it again. There we go. Tool. Same thing on the other side. Grab another pink one. <laughs> Wash it first. So it's paper against paper. Does not want to cooperate, James. Speaking about uh, these uh, kids with electronics, you know how to confuse a kid nowadays? Give Take the electronics away and give them a pencil? Give them a rotary telephone and tell them to make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> give them a rotary telephone. Yeah, they would be baffled. What do I do with this? Wait, they might have seen it in the Henry Ford Museum. They don't know how to work it. Yeah. They may have seen it. It's kind of sad, really. I can see that I'm going to have to definitely adhere this grass. Where's my runner? All the way down to the edge so that it doesn't catch. Look at how sweet. Super cute. Now, don't forget the extra little tip that I showed you. Shannon and I came up with the other day. Is Shanna still with us? No. I can't. She hasn't said anything, maybe. Giving her the credit for this because she came up with, she's like, it needs to slide. I don't know how to make it slide. And I thought, what if we put rails? So kind of straighten the washer. Put a kid in a 70s car and told him to roll down the window. <laughs> a station wagon. They don't even know what that looks like. Isn't that funny? So then you have rails to follow along. So not only is it like zooming really easily from left to right. Look at how super simple. But those railings are catching this so that any pressure that this might be putting on the slat is gone. It's genius. I didn't design that. No, that you did it. That was yours. I can't I'll give you that. credit for that. <gasps> He's going to give me credit. 
<laughs> You're fun. All right. So then that is it. Other than making your card simply gorgeous. Right. And I want to show you. I do definitely want to cut one of these because you ladies deserve to see how awesome. Cha-ching! <laughs> I like that noise. That's a good noise. So I'm going to use a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to run this through the Gemini. Junior. Where's my... Where's the thing? Oh, here they are. I just saw all over the place, James. Yep. <clears throat> Takes me about an hour to clean up after these lives. <laughs> it takes me about, I don't know, an hour and a half to make the first project. And then at least another 30 minutes to cut another one so that I can show and play with, you know, all you lovely crafty folks. Now, why didn't they cut? Oh, it did. Okay. So that's where that little frame that goes that I put on the inside of the card came from. So you're getting like double when you cut with that guy. Which is awesome. Kathy has both the inner guys, but hasn't used them yet. Kathy? She needs to get on it. Kathy, please? Yeah. Oh, no, that's terrible. Yeah, you need to get on there. What you waiting for? What you waiting for? <laughs> you should have got it out tonight. Caught one with us, and we just do it together. Okay. So this, I'm sorry, I should have shared. Picked raspberry. And all I did was color... A little bit of pink every once in a while. And this is Distress Oxide. A little bit different, a little bit softer. And the reason I cut this up this time as well is I think this is spiced. Yep, spiced marmalade. I love orange. Yum. Oh, this orange is really one of my favorite colors. And um, there is like a peachy kind of orange in the alicorn, so it really color coordinated with this particular project super nicely. And these are the old sponges. And you can see it like comes out really kind of thick and dark. Or maybe I'm just heavy handed and I don't know how to blend very well with them. But I'm liking the domes and it helped me with my creations. So I'm going to stick with it. So this is how I made the magic cloud. I can't even get down to the project. Here we go. So like I said, let me see. Just so I can, it doesn't really matter if I create the exact same one again, but I want to get something close to it. So this is going to sit here and then take your top of your cherry on top and put it wherever you think the cloud's going to look the cutest, like right there. All I did was trim. Doesn't have to be exact. <clears throat> Just like that. Look at it, it's a cloud, it's so cute. Okay, so let's take this on. Tape runner. Just like that. And then I used Action stamps. <clears throat> I have to put that through the die because my cutting sucks. <laughs> what? Andrew. Oh. Yeah, that would be okay too. 
I just kind of quick got it. Your A is stamped in that one. I'm just dropping stuff all over this place, James. And then I'm going to use the cherry. I have your son cleaning up. I have my son cleaning up. Oh, I see how you are. I don't necessarily like this part of it, but there's so many other little sections that could be used. Maybe I'll go. Freehand. Freehand. I only want like a little bit of a cloud. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, Mandy, actually, if I had, and this is why we think sometimes after doing it once, we can kind of rethink the way that we performed it, tape it down first, and then just cut completely around the edge. <laughs> that makes complete sense to me. And snap. And there's the cloud. This one I want a little bit higher. Like that. Which means a little bit more of this needs to be trimmed. Is that the dog? Yeah. She went out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's it. Now, I did not redo these guys, but what I can tell you is after I put this frame down into the scene, I make sure that it's glued tightly down all the way around. Okay, and I say that because if any part of these alicorns start to hit it, it's going to kind of bump into the mechanism itself. And then all I did was just decorate the edges. We have the sunshine, and we have some of those black birds somewhere underneath all of these dies that I have scattered throughout my desk. And put this guy here. And then this is also from Cherry on Top. Little flowers that you can cut. And I glittered them and I just drew some stems. That's the whole project, ladies. How fun is that? And then when you turn this over, make sure that everywhere that this mechanism needs to run is not covered with pop dots. Pop this up at least high enough to give leeway for the thickness of this way, Tammy. Everybody's going to fussy cut for you. <laughs> so you're going to definitely want to make it thick enough, but go around the outside edges, stay away from where the mechanism needs to run or work, and then put this down on your frame, the back of the actual card, just like this one. On the inside, all I did was distress a little bit of that frame that comes out when you cut that original frame on the front and put a little bow, and then rear find was stamped, and the project is done. Ladies, that's it today. Let's pick a winner, and I am going to give away the – I can't do the see you in the center because I think I have two left <laughs> in the store. So let's do the cherry on top so everybody gets the opportunity to do that cloud. Try the cloud out. All right. James, mm -hmm. off the top of my head, make sure you comment, ladies, get in there and comment. Thank you for another great show. You're welcome, Sue. I'm going to say comment number 31. Dun, dun, dun. I've made a mess on this desk. I need Sue hints. Sue hints is the winner. Congratulations. 
I don't know if you already have the cherry on top. If that's so, then we can definitely work out one of the other dies, land and seas or something like that that we used in this project. Please get a hold of me at um, my Facebook Messenger Messages or TLC <coughs> Cunliff at yahoo.com. And I will get you the die out tomorrow morning. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, you want to put it up on me so I can talk to them camera wise? Sure. Mm -hmm. Just waiting. Oh, there you are. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Please, if you get an opportunity to visit uh, the Aaron Makes with TLC Designs on the 20th, I'll have advertisements out on both the Facebook pages. Uh, and we are going to update some more of the blog information as well. I don't know if any of you have joined there, but it's tlcdesigns-inspiration.blogspot.com. That information is on the store page as well. It was wonderful visiting with you. This was a really fun project, and I'm loving this new release. If you have an opportunity to work with them, I'd love for you guys to share your projects in the creative sharing group as well. So we can all take a peek and see what, New stuff is coming and stuff, like I said, really inspired me with using that um, cloud section or the top section of the cherry on top die. Uh, it's nice to be inspired by somebody that loves doing what you do. And I love visiting with all of you on Thursday night at 8 o'clock. And we will see you on the 20th or next Thursday when we announce some of the winners from the Instagram hop as well as the um Original on the 14th, we had a booth tour and things like that. So there are some winners for that that need to be given out gift certificates too. So if you get a chance, join us. And you will have another chance on the 20th to win a gift certificate as well. So be sure and join us. And we will see you soon.